that it's it you're putting forth that effort that's what that's what the word is used but in the next verse in Philippians he says it's God in you who works to will and to do of his own good pleasure meaning he gives energy it's the word energio in the Greek which is our word for energy of course meaning that God energizes your faith that works puts forth that effort that sacrificial effort in repentance to present yourself that living sacrifice that humility that brokenness so that this, that clearing in the zeal and the vindication and finally the purity of heart can take place see repentance is observable see observe this very thing he says in the next verse right in 2 Corinthians 7 11 observe this very thing what it produced in you see under this substitution and atonement and all these alternatives to obedience there's no observable result other than the person comes sheds a few tears he's sorry for his sins he knows it's ruined his life him or her but there's no observable result of them coming clean with God going through that season of godly sorrow being purged of that sin and then sprinkled with the blood and coming out on the other side truly vindicated in pure in heart with victory over the sin the flesh and the devil not a pattern of ruin see that's why we constantly hear these people saying loving God is about nothing about doing or don't See, that's what these preachers were saying and some of you people out of the system still follow these preachers that's my contention here that's why this matters so you still follow preachers that say, well, loving God is not about doing or don't, but yet he preaches a holiness message. He says you've got to obey God and stop sinning. But it's underscored with this, it's been done for you. And the real issue is not whether or not you sin that's going to disqualify you from the kingdom. It's that you are in the kingdom regardless of what you do or don't do. But you should live a holy life. It's cloaked, see? It's a code within the code, kind of speak, so to speak. They say repentance is not a mandate for salvation. Uh, show me one scripture in the Bible that says you've got to turn from your sins to be saved. See, they'll say stuff like that, but yet so many of you are without discernment when you listen to their, their messages online. And then you, you send them over to me, the link, and, and say, oh, listen to this, this is a great message. I listen to it for 10 minutes, and I hear something like this. And I say, it, it blows my mind why you would send it to me when you follow my teaching, but yet you still are into this substitution. You're into this moral transfer. You're into people saying things like this. Well, if there's no scripture in the Bible that says you've got to turn from sin to be saved, well, what was Peter talking about? when he preached the sermon in Acts about turning from sin. About Acts 3.19. Repent and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Well, what are you turning from if you're not turning from sin? It's, they'll say turning from sin, that's a work. See, you're preaching a work of salvation. No, it's not a work. It's a sacrificial commitment, our duty to God, when he issues the command to repent. Uh, he has to make you willing because you have some kind of corruption in your nature. We've been over this nature thing hundreds of times. Those of you that follow my ministry should understand what nature is and not still be confused in mixing it with some kind of, well, man's born dead in his sins, man's born with this corrupted nature. No, man comes dead in his sins by a progression of evil because nature, being physis, being physics, a progression, a, a nature of growth, and by the progression of evil, his spirit dies in that sin. He's not that he's, his reason is cut off. He, it doesn't forfeit his ability to reason with God. Otherwise, God wouldn't say, come, let us reason together. He says that to scarlet sinners in Isaiah 1. John the Baptist is talking to people, come clean with God, bring forth fruit worthy of repentance that are yet in their sins because they are able to do it. And then you get people that we even post over to some of the one brother I just read about, about does, does it matter here, the, the moral depravity, 
people will post over to him Martin Luther's comments. Martin Luther that said, well, be bold. Be bold. Be a bold sinner. Even if we commit murder and adultery a hundred times a day, we're still forgiven. Well, if you can't discern that that is a demonic message and dispensed with all the theology from the Reformation, from both sides of the Reformation, folks, then I don't really know if anything I could say could persuade you. See, I'm not asking you to do this because I say to do it. I'm saying it because it's the right thing to do in the times in which we live in the type of delusion and strong delusion that we're facing. We have to pull down the strongholds in the people's minds that are in bondage to their sin for a reason. That's what we've got to pull down. We've got to defeat that first, and then finally you'll get a few. There are only going to be a few. I mean, look at the, the hundreds of millions of people out there. I mean, just look at one in particular, Joel Olstein's church, for example. There's, there's probably 100,000 people a weekend collecting millions of dollars in one collection, collection plate, going to that supreme wolf, and their souls are perishing, how many is going to come out of that? There's, you're talking maybe 150,000 people. Let's say maybe one responds out of that. That's what we're up against. And until you realize that, that not everybody out there that we agree to disagree, and well, he's, he says good things, but he's saying some bad things, and he's mixing truth with error. He's got a bunch of old theology on his website, and he promotes Finney, and he promotes all these other guys from the Reformation. See, that, that's what is keeps people in their confusion. I'm telling you, you bring, you bring someone out of this mess when they realize that it's their responsibility to stop sinning and come to God in repentance. That's when it happens. See, what happens if you stay in this is you risk the error of the wicked, like Peter's talking about in 2 Peter 3. Be steadfast and stand strong in your faith least you be led astray into the error of the wicked. See, this lead you astray, these teachings. If you don't sort it out, if you don't discern it, if your discernment doesn't become sharp, sharper than any two-edged sword, able to, able to divide between soul and spirit and cut us under. That's why it's so important. See, people can stop sinning. We have to dispense with this corrupted nature nonsense or man being born dead in his sins and all that stuff, that ancient theology, and understand all we're saying, people can stop sinning. People that don't love God or don't know anything about God, they stop their addictions. They, they get victory over their drunkenness and their alcoholism and all the rest of it, go through their programs, their ruinous behavior make amends with their spouse after committing adultery and return to a fidelity and a relationship for the rest of their lives. They don't know anything about God at all. They don't love God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. They don't seek the truth. They didn't find any kind of remission for their past sins. But see, that doesn't mean it saved themselves. See, only the blood can forgive our past sins, can remit our past sins. But you still have to come to God for remission of those past sins in repentance. That's your part. God's part is mercy and grace. Our part is repentance and faith. That's the key here. So understanding that man's nature has the ability to know the difference between right and wrong, like the Gentiles said in Romans 2, 14 and 15, that by nature did the things contained in the law, because their nature, natural inclinations, natural law of occurrences, understood that it was wrong to commit adultery, to steal, to murder, to all that kind of thing. So they could stop those things, but if they didn't seek God, they didn't seek to love Him, worship Him as the one true God, well, there's no remission of that past sin. You can stop all the sins you want, but if you don't get your past sins remitted by the blood, you're still under condemnation. So we're not saying you save yourself. Nobody can save themselves in that they can remit their past sins. That's only through the mercy and the grace of God. But mercy is, whereas mercy is remission, and pardon, release, grace is charisma, grace is power. 
Grace is empowerment. So two things are the free gift. The free gift is not to license